Thank you so much for checking out my video. If you find this guide useful at all, I'd really appreciate a like and all that. You know the drill. Back when Trial of One was first added to the game, there were a lot of cheese strats that made it pretty easy to get through the harder trials. Most of these have been patched by now, but some tricks still remain and are included in this guide. I recommend using a battle axe for Trial of One, as some of the trials are a lot easier with the heavy weapon's critical attack. If the build you're going for doesn't use a heavy weapon, you can just switch weapon after the finishing the trial. Alright, I'll start by showing how to navigate to the trial. The video is split into sections, so you can skip ahead if you already know how to get there. Sailing out from the Etrus docks, you'll want to turn right and head towards the large gate. Once you're through the gate, simply follow the white line on the right until you see another gate. Sail through this gate and you will see a snowy island called Minotursa in front of you. As you reach the shore, leave your trusty boat and follow the route I'm headed. You may come across some strong NPCs or monsters, but simply keep running and they will stop chasing you. Around this corner is a building surrounded by hostile NPCs. You have to run past these and go around the right side of the building. Then, go through the last opening in the wall, down the ladders and run to the light. Once you've entered the trial, simply head down the hall with a grey door at the end and touch it to go through. Inside this room, there is a small platform in the center which starts the first trial when you stand on it. Before the first trial starts, you're stripped of most of your belongings, including any resources, consumables and equipped armor. Any clothing purchased from the blacksmith is also completely drained, making it pointless to bring. As you can see, however, by eating some of my bread, I'm able to smuggle the rest of it with me to the trial. As far as I know, this can be used to smuggle all sorts of consumables. Lastly, note how my unequipped armor is not deleted. You can safely equip this after, but don't do that just yet. You'll see why soon. The first trial is rather simple. Orbs of light will shoot towards you and you must parry them to survive. You only have to press F once for each sequence, right as the first orb is about to hit. After 5 orb sequences, the speed increases, this happens twice. For the last stage, you just have to spam F as fast as you can and that's it. You're rewarded with a bit of luck when you finish the first trial. However, you're still level 1, so you can leave the trial and come back to redo the first trial and get more luck. Simply click the door icon in the top left and return to the main menu. Once you're locked back in, you'll be standing right outside the entrance and you can enter the trial again. As you can see, I have 26% luck this time, and can now start the trial over to be rewarded again. Repeat this process until you reach 43% luck, which is the maximum. When you finish the first trial for the last time, you can finally equip any armor you may have brought from your previous life. When it comes to leveling up and picking talents, you can do as you like depending on what build you're going for. However, I strongly recommend that you fold whenever you can, assuming you didn't get a rare or legendary talent. You should also choose two random talents over mantras until you finish the trial. This will highly increase your chances of getting rare and legendary talents throughout the trial. In the second trial you'll be facing a Sharko. If you stand at the stairs when he spawns there's a chance he will use a ranged attack. This attack can be easily parried in the same way as the orbs in the first trial. Simply press F once right before it hits you. After this attack you can get two hits in before he starts his regular attack pattern. Shaco has four different attack patterns, excluding the scream and ranged attack. Each attack is made up of swings and kicks, which can be parried and rolled respectively. He will either swing twice, swing once and kick, swing once and pause, or just kick. Between each of these attacks, you can hit him twice before his next attack begins. If you're feeling confident, you can also get a single hit when he does the swing and pause attack. As you saw, I messed up one of his kicks, but was still able to recover and beat him anyway. In the third trial, you're up against the stone golem. This time, you should stand right next to the platform to sneak in a critical hit right as he spawns and then roll. The stone golem is relatively easy to beat, as all you need to do is hit and roll repeatedly. Once you have the timing down, you'll never lose to the golem again. Some of the attacks can be parried, but I recommend just rolling through everything as it makes things easier. Personally, I like to strafe right when I fight the golem, so I don't have to think about it when I need to roll. For the most part, you will just get in one hit, roll through his attack, and repeat. If he starts charging his laser attack, you can hit him once more, and then roll when the sound is about to end. If he starts his spinning attack, you can hit him three times, and then spam F to parry his attack until he stops spinning. 
Lastly, he also has an attack where he screams and rocks start falling. There is seemingly no way to reliably avoid this attack, so just hit him 3 times if this happens. Remember what I said about rolling two random talents instead of taking mantras? In this run I was lucky and got the legendary card Adept for free by doing this. When you roll two random talents, you don't lose any luck by getting a rare or legendary talent. Next up is the Thresher. A lot of people find this to be one of the trickiest ones. Just like with the Golem, you should try to sneak in a critical attack right as it spawns and then roll away. If you, like me, happen to struggle with parrying the Thresher's attacks, there's another way to beat it. The way I like to fight it is to keep walking backwards and roll whenever it attacks. If you roll but it catches up while doing the bite or arm swing attack, you can try to parry the last part of the attack. You should be able to attack once or twice between each of its attacks, but don't get too close at any time. Whenever it digs underground, you just need to roll as soon as you see the first red flash and you won't get hit. The most important thing for the Thresher is that you keep your distance at all times and don't get greedy with getting in hits. By the way, once you beat the Thresher, you'll unlock the Minotaur's spawn, meaning you won't have to sail here anymore when starting over. In the fifth trial, you're meant to face two angels at once, but there's a trick that lets you fight only one of them. Before you start the trial, you need to move over to this wall and stand so that the pillar is between you and the platform where the angels spawn. If you're crouched in this position, the angels won't see you and you can walk up to them from behind. You then have to hit one of them in the back without hitting the other one, and then back away immediately. The angel will use its ranged attack, which you can parry by holding F right when the first one is about to hit you. The angel is one of the trials that in my opinion gets significantly easier with the heavy weapon critical. Rather than parry trading as you would with a sword, you can parry the angel's attack once and then immediately use a critical attack to stun it. If it rolls back, get ready to parry again. If you hit it however, it becomes stunned and you can get in a normal attack or two. It should only take about 3 rounds of critical attack and normal attacks to knock the angel. Once it's knocked, you want to pick it up and grip it close to the wall. Otherwise, the other angel will notice you and attack. Trial number 6 has you up against the dreaded enforcer. This trial is the main reason that I recommend using a heavy weapon as the crit makes the fight so much easier. If you're standing far enough away, the enforcer will start by pulling you in and then attempting to kick you. You have to parry this kick and then do a critical attack followed by a normal attack. Then for the remainder of the fight, you must parry twice and hit him with a critical and normal attack. There are two things the enforcer might do to mess up this rhythm. First, he might feint his attack to bait out your parry and then hit you. In this case, you have to quickly hold F when you hear the tick sound. The second thing is that he might parry your critical attack. If so, simply parry twice and then try attacking again. Lastly, I forgot to include it in this clip, but if you get hit by a kick, you'll be pushed back and the enforcer will start spinning. When this happens, you need to run away until he stops spinning, then he pulls you back in, tries to kick you again, just like in the beginning. Next, in Trial 7, we have the Stone Knight. In my opinion, this is actually one of the easier trials, but it also punishes mistakes harder. You'll want to be standing at the stairs for this one as well, to guarantee a ranged attack first. When the Stone Knight spawns, it will fire a slicing projectile towards you, which you can simply block. You should start approaching the Stone Knight right as it spawns, while holding block until the projectile hits you. Just like the Stone Golem, I recommend strafing right and rolling through all the attacks. You should try to get in two hits between each roll, except when it uses the pillar attack, which only gives you time for a single hit. Also, when it swings its sword, it can either do a second swing or pause. If it swings again, you need to parry, then hit it twice. If it pauses, you can only get in one hit before its next attack. That's all you need to know for this one. It might seem difficult in the beginning, but it becomes very predictable once you get the timing down. Trial 8 is just more of the fast orbs, spam F and you'll be just fine. In the 9th and final trial, you're meant to be facing an Alpha Sharko and the Light Orbs at the same time. 
This is rather difficult, but thankfully there is a cheese method. Before you pick the second talent, make your way to this corner at the entrance and crouch down while facing the center of the room. When the trial starts, you must let yourself be hit by the first couple of orbs. Then, simply hold F to block the orbs, which does not affect your posture. After about 3 minutes, the orbs will stop coming. You can then fight the Alpha Sharko, which is just like the one in the second trial, except with a lot less health. Once you beat all the trials, you are rewarded with the legendary talent Mark of the Lone Warrior, which makes you progress faster. This talent stacks with Adept, so both are definitely worth getting for a quick progression. Thanks for watching through to the end, I wish you the best of luck on your trial. If you start getting frustrated, go touch grass and come back later with a fresh mind. That's all for this time, remember that Felonors are the spawn of the devil and have a good day.